Hi, I'm Old North Specialist Jackson Crawford. I get a lot of requests to translate various things out of pop culture into Old Norse, and a lot of them just don't work in Old Norse. A language with different ways of talking about even some pretty everyday concepts, and with such a different poetic structure than we're accustomed to in contemporary English or French or even something like Swedish. But the works of J.R.R. Tolkien, which are uh, receiving renewed attention because of the new Amazon series, and which have always been popular with uh, enthusiasts of Norse language and myth, and maybe I ought to say really more like vice versa, um, translate fairly well. He was, after all, a professor of subjects such as Old English and Old Norse. And so one translation request into Old Norse actually piqued my interest, which was the One Ring inscription. What I'm going to do is present not just a um, straight up translation of exactly the words that you'll see there, but also an attempt to make it work as Old Norse poetry, specifically the Eric meter known as Fornir the Slag, the meter in which the poem Volospal, for example, is composed, the tale of the beginning and end of the world. And uh, I'll uh, take this as sort of a teaching opportunity about Old Norse meter, a subject that I've made a number of videos about in the past. All right, you can look up the English easily enough. I'm going to give you mild Norse and then explain how it's a little bit different from the uh, original English. Thrir ringar hersum, himin thak the olva, siau i stein solum, stillum dverga, niu fega folki, folda buandum, ein mirkva drotni, mirkva stole o, ilandi mordri, ligia skugar, ein ringar rather, ein ringar finner, ein olum furrier, Olum oak um binder. I oliosi ringum, odrum motcum. I landi mortri, ligia scugar. So that I tr back translate my own Old Norse translation here. Three rings for the lords of the sky roofed elves, the, the elves under the sky. Seven in the stone halls for the lords of dwarves. Old Norse poetry gives you a lot of options for talking about things like lords and kings, so that's given me a lot to work with in terms of alliteration here. Nine for uh, the people doomed to die, right, by implication human beings, the dwellers in the of the dwellers of the soils of the field, something like that. You can take it as farmers of the fields, which is about the same concept in Old Norse. One for the Dark Lord, or Lord of Darkness, on the throne of darkness. Shadows lie in the land Mordor, which not very coincidentally strongly resembles the word murder in Old Norse. One ring rules them implied sort of implied, but comes a little bit later. One ring finds, one brings all and binds all. In the darkness, it rules, finds, brings, binds the other mighty rings. Shadows lie in the land Mordor. So what I've done is, ah, uh, tried to turn this into, well, decent, alliterative, etic, Old Norse poetry. Let me give you a quick word from my friends and partners at Grimfrost, and I'll come back and talk a little bit more about the details of what that's involved.
So if you watch my Old Norse poetry videos, I have one from a long time ago that uh, needs revised considerably, and I started revising it in a series that I began in 2018 or 19, and never quite finished that series. Or if you look in the uh, intro to my book, The Wanderers Hall of Them All, you'll see some information about how Old Norse poetry works, and it's based on lifts, right, stressed syllables, and alliteration of some of those lifts. So what I've gone for is two to three lifts in each line. Some translators or editors would make these half lines. And in the odd line, one or two of those alliterate, and then whichever one's alliterated in the odd line, they also alliterate with the first lift in the following even line. I've been a little bit stricter about that than in some of my older uh, attempts at composition in Old Norse. So for example, in that first couplet, Trier, Hringar, Hersum, Himen, Thakna, Olva, we have, I would count three lifts in each line, and we have uh, the Hringar and Hersum alliterate in the first, and they alliterate with the first line and the next one, Himen. The first lift in the next line, Himen. Remember that any vowel alliterates with any other vowel. That's why I felt entitled to alliterate Oliosi and Othrum. And uh, when we have S followed by another consonant, that whole sequence needs to alliterate. That's why in three and four, it's stain solum, alliterating with stillum. All right. There's some more economy possible with the language in Old Norse than in English. So for example, I don't have an explicit translation for the word four in like three rings, four, the elven kings, four, the dwarf lords, four, mortal men. Instead, letting the recipients to stand in the dative, the normal Old Norse way of expressing something as for someone. I thought that fegr, the adjective that I use in line five, was a perfect choice for doomed to die. That's actually what that means in Old Norse. Famously appears on the Ruk runestone. And instead of ending with in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie, because where is such a weak syllable in Old Norse and just sort of takes up space that doesn't need to be taken. Uh, I left it out and just said, the shadows lie in that land. That second stanza may be a little bit uh, more difficult decisions there. I made the decision in the first couplet there just to let uh, ring and ring alliterate. I don't know if Snorri Sturluson would fully approve, but it works for me. And uh, I have all these four Verbs, rather finner, footer, binder, rules, finds, uh, brings, binds, uh, working on the same objects, perfectly allowable in Old Norse, slightly weirder in English, right? In English, it'd be harder to say one ring to rule them all, one ring to find, one ring to bring, and in the darkness, bind without restating them, uh, as of course Tolkien in his original does. I've depicted this inscription not just in the Roman uh, inscription, not this little translation, not just in the Roman alphabet, but also in younger Futhark runes, the runes used in the Viking Age, and thus to write early Old Norse. You'll notice uh, if you look closely that many letters are written the same as other letters. So for example, D's and T's are written with the same letter, letter tier. That is an inefficiency in that system, but uh, that is very much part of the younger Futhark runic writing system during the Viking Age. So I think this is an okay metrical composition for Fornir the Sog in Old Norse, but someone who's after all not a native speaker of Old Norse, but has been working with it for 19 years. And uh, I hope <laughs> J.R.R. Tolkien would uh, take it in good humor. It seems like the kind of thing he would approve of, uh, but uh, I guess I'll never know. Too bad. In any case, from beautiful Colorado, let me thank you and Patreon for all of your kindness and support over the years. And uh, to Patreon and everyone else too, let me wish you all the best.